there as you can see it's uh, but like I said it's just hard for her to because of the bullying that comes with it anyway that's the update this is Bevot only and I'm here at the vulcanizing shop this one is able to pull out. causing all our problems. Well, let's hope that was what was causing our problems. Okay, so that was three dollars for I don't know 15 20 minutes worth of work and but they've got a lot of equipment and then I tipped him 20 pesos on top of that so that uh, so it wasn't like the pressure would always be low so I, I would just fill it up and then it would be low again I go oh, you know why I need to bring this in and figure out what's really going on and so there was that nail. So I'm gonna follow it up after a couple of days and uh, make sure that uh, there's no other, that it's still not low pressure again. But you know, for only three dollars, it was definitely worth trying that. And if it's that's fixed, then then that's it. Anyway, that was one of the things I wanted to take care of. Also, I was noticing that it's always that tire pressure in the back was always low consistently. And uh, lo and behold, it was just a nail. Alright, time to get back to the rest of my day. Cool. Okay everyone, here's the update on the Hyundai i10 over here. It just overheated and uh, uh, what did you say, top overhaul? Yeah. So the car is going to be in the shop for the next three weeks. So that means I can't do anything for the next three weeks and I have no idea how much this is going to cost because like I said they don't know what the extent of the damage is of the overheat but that's the update so I don't we don't have the Hyundai i10 for the next three weeks or a month let's just say one month so there's nothing I could do about it I, they said the reason why is the, the thermometer or the ther thermometer thermostat just didn't kick in and just it wouldn't, it just wouldn't keep the engine cool. Why did they did that? I have no idea. So, back in Indonesia, Gumana, yung cooling? Uh, yung fan motor, auxiliary fan motor, must from maybe already damaged. That's why it's not uh... the auxiliary fan motor didn't kick in. So, so... Although the compressor already started. But still, the auxiliary fan motor is not responding. So not cause, responding. The main cause is the radiator fan motor. Radiator fan motor didn't yeah. go. Initially, the problem for all this is the radiator fan motor that did not work. Wouldn't kick in. Well, why the radiator fan motor didn't work, we don't know because it's um, broken. Electrical components, because it's a set, it's not even a lot of electric. Great, so that's why the car overheated. Yes, sir. That's the, the light went on today. That's why I was here. I brought it in here. Now it's gonna be a mess. Three weeks. We don't know what the cost is yet. So, so the. So, 
So what a headache. So the car overheated, but they don't know exactly know why. They said the, the radiator fan didn't keep it cool now. Uh, now they don't know what the extent of the damage is. So, but they're saying at least three weeks. I don't know what the cost is yet. So that's why the radiator coolant blowing Overheated. Great. Let's see up here. Okay, true believers, here's the update. So I'm driving the Fortuner now. So, we, I mean, we have this car, but this is our family car, and uh, this is what the boss uses. So, I technically don't have a car for the next three weeks. I don't even know the cost. I've never had a car overheat on me before. So, I'm sure there's a lot of things that need to be fixed and replaced and repaired. So the update, so I won't know what the cost is until they I disassemble the car and they're just gonna email me or they're gonna call me and let me know what the actual cost is. So three weeks is just an estimate. I don't even know the cost, but it could be longer. It, it would be most likely be longer than shorter if it was three weeks and that's fine, but I'm just saying, talking about a month here where I won't have use of the car what scares me most is I was just driving I was in the car when it was dry when I was driving and I just noticed the light right away but what happened is if the boss and hero were driving the car and the, and the SLEX or something like that and the car would have overheated or I, I don't even know what if they would have kept going she would have probably pulled over but anyway or I you know if it wasn't it, it, it it's a dangerous situation. Fortunately, I was the one in the car. I stopped, pulled over right away. And luckily we were right here by the dealer and we just pulled up without having to use a tow truck or something like that. But anyway, it's getting to the point where that's concerning where I go, How, what could I have done to prevent this? And they said, no, it's just the radiator fan will just stop working. It's an electrical problem and you will know. And, and that's where it overheats just like that it'll stop working well yes the car is what is it over 130 something thousand kilometers and eight years old and it's normal for for it to start breaking down like that but it's just kind of i get to a point where like is it worth it fixing it and then you still have an old car where you're like or what happens if something else breaks down or another part breaks down and then it's and it's just dangerous to the point where it's not reliable anymore as you can see i've had problems with the air conditioner with the coolant already now this big huge overheating mess and it's just electrical parts start breaking down and i need to ask myself if it's worth the risk of continuing fixing a used car or the safety and I, I guess that I'll have to talk to our friends about that because that's going to be something that we're going to be using not only when our friends visit but something I use every day for our for our friends over here so that's going to be has to be something that I'm going to have to talk about and we'll go from there anyway that's the update so I'll, maybe I'll talk about it uh, I mean I'm talking about it right now but anyway I, right now I'm just kind of like in shock about not having a car for the next month when so many people well uh, several people are I need something reliable that I could drive but even then afterwards I mean there's so many electrical things that can go wrong in a car that that's just one thing what happens if it's another another thing and another thing and I just can't afford or risk having it break down in a situation like I said where if what happens if I was in the middle of a meeting or if I was in the middle of a trip or it was in the middle of taking somebody to the airport or picking up somebody at the airport or in the middle of a long trip to Batangas or to Manila or to Pampanga or something and then this happens it's just not worth the risk but the cost 
is going to be something that we all have to consider now. You know, we got the cost of repairs versus the cost. Uh, I mean, the, the, yes, there's be the cost of repairs. I guess we have to repair it no matter what. But now we have to consider now the risk involved. You know, what do I do for the next three weeks? But anyway, that's something to consider. This is Bebs only. Thanks for watching. What's a cat doing in the wheel well there? Okay, here's the update. I, were, I was told that the fan just stopped working. That's why the car overheated. The coolant fan just stopped working. So they gave us an estimate over here on the cost of repairs and it's a lot. So I just want to update everyone. We're here at the Hyundai dealer, the one close to our home, not the one that I go to in Santa Rosa. And as you can see, they, they, they haven't opened up anything except this part over here. That's it. So let's go through the cost of repairs over here. So you want to get the timing belt done, water pump assembly, thermostat assembly, uh, radiator cap assembly, motor radiator, cooling fan. They said that was the problem. The basket engine overhaul, seal valve system, head cylinder, cylinder head machine shop. So this is where the big cost was. So if you look at the cost of the parts over here, the biggest cost over here is the head assembly cylinder. Labor is 30,000. So we're looking at 91,000 possibly. So uh, So if so they put in the possibility over here that it could be this or it could be that. If the cylinder head is cracked and needs to be replaced, then it's 24,000 pesos. But if it just needs to be machined, it's 13,000 pesos. So we're, so we're talking about a month over here for almost $2,000 worth of work. And the car is probably most, the car is worth mostly only two or $3,000. That's my big problem over here is a car that's only worth two or three thousand dollars and we're spending about two thousand dollars or more into parts and repair and it's still going to be a disposable car as much as i like the car you know i'm not in love with it i still need something reliable You know, should I spend the $2,000 on this? Or should I apply it towards a new car with safety features and is reliable, has warranty, and you know, versus this car spending good money after bad on it. This, like I said, this car is disposable. And I bought it eight years ago. It served me fine, but now it's, as you can see, the repairs are costing more than the car itself and we still don't know if a lot of things can go wrong so that's the update the numbers don't lie as you could see like I said the biggest problem was the cylinder head it either needs to be replaced or machined and this is the estimated price And the biggest problem is it's going to be take a month to get these parts that they want ordered, repaired. So for a month, I'm not going to have a car. I repeat, for a month, one month, no car. 
is the probably the hardest part. Of course, the two thousand dollars is a big hit, but what the hell am I gonna do with the one month? That, you know, I can't make content for a month, so that's where my dilemma is. That's where I'm at with this with with the situation. Do I spend the good, more money, more good money after bad, or do I just keep the? So I was telling the technician over here that why I spend two thousand dollars on a car, on an old car over here, and where things can still go wrong when I could spend money on a brand new car with more safety features for $10,000 and apply that $2,000 into it when the car itself is probably only worth two or $3,000. You know, and we still don't know what the problem is with the cylinder head because they haven't opened it yet. So they just give me a bunch of estimates. And I said, well, you've had the car for several days now, why haven't you looked at it to make sure I can't make a decision if you don't that's the idea of leaving the car here and get, diagnosing what is the real problem so they had to I had to give a lecture before they could proceed so now they could proceed now they're opening it up so let's take a look at the cylinder head Like I said, I repeat, my biggest problem is going to take a month or more for, the, for all these things to finally come together, for the parts to be delivered, for all this machining. Like I said, for one month. I have no vehicle for one month. It's, it's probably the biggest problem. Can, you know, can, can we all wait for one month? I don't know. So the moral of the story is don't let your car overheat and that's what I was trying to do but as you can see it wasn't the water pump wasn't the problem it was the cooling fan Tama yes sir show the show cooling fan I didn't even know that the cooling fan was a problem I was planning on replacing the water pump even if I replaced the water pump the cooling fan would have still broke see that's why that's the problem when you have an old car. It's like even if you replace one thing, the other, everything is connected. Pero pwede natin buksan and walang problema yung cylinder head. Sir, possible. Possible, sir. Pero mga other possible, sir, talagang bira magka problema. Alright, so makikita na natin ngayon? Yeah, pwede, sir. Okay, let's cut. Let's catch this on film then, on record, for my for my car vlog. I just launched a car vlog, ko. Sure, sir. Maganda yan. <laughs> Para makikita nila pag na overheat yung kotse nila. Ito yung gagawain nila. Kailangan nila gawain. Yeah. 
So I said, I'm doing this for my car vlog, so in case somebody's car gets overheated, they know exactly what they need to do or what needs to be done. And so they could see what the cylinder cylinder head looks like. Para makita nila ano yung itsura ng sirang cylinder head. Pasensya kayo sa Tagalog ko, medyo bulol. Okay na sir. Pero naintindihan nyo naman yung balak namin. Yes, Ano naman importante yung sasakyan dito. Gusto lang namin, ano ba yung problema, tsaka huwag natin sayangin yung panahon natin. So we got two technicians opening up the engine here. You know, this would be my second. The other job that I wanted to do was a mechanic. I should have been a mechanic instead. fixing things and assembling things uh, it would have been natural for me to just be a mechanic also I would have been working on cars instead of people and I probably would have enjoyed it more there we go there's the unveiling Okay, so the idea is we're supposed to look for the cylinder heads. It's just like, look at all these, I mean, look at all the things that are connected to this engine and it's just any of those pieces that are made out of plastic or rubber can just start to the humidity and the weather over here and the temperature over here just decomposes rubber and plastic over time. It's not like the dry 
conditions in, the, for example, the southwest of the U.S. It's just, uh, it's just, like I said, there's just so many things that can go wrong after, I'm talking about after almost 10 years of car use that once one, one thing goes wrong, it affects everything else. You see how all of a sudden... Like I said, the biggest problem with this car is it doesn't have any safety features. No airbags, no anti-lock brakes. It doesn't even have a headrest for the backseat people. It's, and I always said, but I always compromise that because of you know, the safest, the biggest safety feature is always the driver. But when it's become unreliable, All of a sudden it catches on fire while you're in the middle of the expressway and then you brake hard and then there's anti-lock brakes it's basically a coffin on wheels then and that happens and when we're looking it's, it becomes like a, number one a safety issue now i could always avoid accidents if the car is reliable but if the car is breaking down in the middle of you using it then it becomes a safety issue number one safety issue and number two is the time that's going to be you know, that's that's going to be wasted allocated or well, not wasted because it's being fixed while this thing is being repaired and over here because it's it's not a common vehicle the parts are not readily available there's you're not going to see third parties versus like a BS which is like the country's taxi car this car is only you're only going to find parts available through the dealer and that's where it gets expensive time wise cost wise and safety wise is, is now those three factors that are coming into my decision now the decision now is like what is going on with the cylinder head Like I said, I just fixed the air conditioner unit. Like I said, I fixed the, the coolant assembly. Now I've got to overhaul the engine now. So we're, we're probably talking about $3,000 in expenses already in, the la in this past year, in the last six months. on an eight-year-old car with over i think 140,000 kilometers now okay which belt is that i don't belt that's the timing belt there's the timing belt which let's take a look at the condition Boy. 
At least the oil looks nice and clean in there. We're going to torque that baby. Me, I probably would have stripped it. <laughs> then we would have been in trouble. There goes the coolant hose. All the coolant to cool the engine is out. There she goes. Oh, well, this fails to get a bigger pipe. Okay, the moral of the story is look at all the things that can go wrong. The back is breaking just looking at it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. Eesh.
Islam. Hanging around here. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't So, I think it took about an hour to disassemble. One hour later, two technicians working on it. Okay, okay. Tama, pero lang. Machine shop lang, sir. Machine shop. No replace. Cylinder. Cylinder gasket. Cylinder gasket. Gasket. So, yun kailangan palitan? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Pakita mo sa akin yung sira sa cylinder gasket. Sir. Hindi akin mga sisa dito po nagkakaproblema. Ano po? Run out na po. Okay, pakita mo sa akin yung... Ito po. Ay, yung face na po, re-replace po yan para pumantay. Para pumantay po siya ulit. Kasi sir, kung susukatin natin yun ng ano, ano po yan, medyo may mga ano, may, may, may bengkong sir. So, machine shop lang yeah, yan? Yeah, machine shop. Re-replace sir, ipapantay. Okay, this is the part that needs to be machined and set to get it even again.
timing belt. Lipat Jim, lipat. Okay. Okay, na sir. Machine shop. Yeah, machine shop. So we know it doesn't have to be replaced, it just has to be machine shot. That's 13,000 pesos or about $300. That's why I said don't let your car overheat. Alright, that's the update. Okay, we actually got clarification. So here's all the things that we want to get done. We might as well get the brakes done. All those things while it's at the shop. Like what I had originally planned, but just the machining is going to be this part right here. So the total is about 68,000 pesos or about $1,400 $1, is the update. I just have to put a deposit down on the parts and they can get it started. And like I said, it might probably it'll take a month or longer in the meantime but you know the car has to be repaired and we'll decide what to do with the car after it's been after 1400 has been invested in fixing the overheat problem okay they said the first week of august is their estimate it could be sooner but i wouldn't be holding my breath they said they'll call me but they, that's their estimate so one month or more of no car that's the update.